What you're about to listen to is a Bri Fi production. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Bri Fi Podcast. I'm your host, Bri Fi, your comics guy, and um sorry on the live stream, we're a little bit late this evening, but you know what? Still getting it done, having a lot of fun with it. And uh, hopefully you guys are having a lot of fun doing the live stuff, you know. Uh, currently, no one's watching. <laughs> there was someone who, like, peeked in to be like, hey, I wonder what... Nope, not for me, not for me. And then left. So, you know what? I'm okay with that. I'm not for everyone. I'm not everyone's cup of tea, which I'm actually drinking tonight. Ha! Comedy! There we go. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I want to just thank everyone who tunes in on the live show, everyone who comes in on the uh, regular recording stream. And everyone who listens in any other way, whether it be YouTube, Podbean, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, or just wherever you can find me. I think you can even find me on Geek Life Radio Network. I can't even remember if I'm still a part of that. And if I am, I don't think I've updated the episode for like two months. So it's probably like an old episode from two months ago that's just on repeat whenever my time slot is which i've forgotten when my time slot is because that's how uh, great i am at caring <laughs> uh, so if you like to listen to a podcast who cares as little as you do you've come to the right place the bri Fi podcast where not only do we review comic books and other fun comic book pop culture things we do talk about nifty nerd news which covers anything from movies video games just things that i find nifty and nerdy and that's in the news. And then we also just kind of chit-chat about what's going on. And sometimes my family gets involved and things like that. So we have we like to have a lot of fun here at the bri Fi Podcast. Because, you know, we're good guys. We're good fun. Well, it's just me. So we're a good guy. Just one fun good guy. Um, also, this weekend was supposed to be Comic Palooza. Um, which probably by this point, it's Sunday. As I'm recording this, I would probably be super exhausted and ready to go home. Uh, but no, I'm already home because COVID-19 happened, which I always want to try to move from COVID, but it just keeps popping its ugly head up every week, uh, whether it's in the news, whether it's in my personal life. It just, it always seems to affect everything that I'm trying to do. And the biggest hurt right now is Comic Palooza. Uh, COVID-19 canceled Comic Palooza this year, or well, you know, it didn't do it. The creators did because they wanted to be safe and not get anyone sick from COVID-19, which was the smartest move they could have made, honestly. And instead of trying to reschedule it for later this year when we're still not sure how COVID's going to play out, there's still not a vaccine for it. And also, you know, there's other conventions that are probably doing the same thing. I think it's wise for Comic Palooza to just move on to next year, you know, just call this the year that we missed and get, you know, get on with our lives next year. But, uh, oh, hey, baby guac. And thanks for the kissy face. That makes me feel a lot better. Because you're the only one listening to me right now. <laughs> Anywho, um, so yeah. Uh, other than the com Comic Palooza stuff, which this is kind of like hashtag RIP Comic Palooza for 2020. But 2021, we're coming back. It will rise from the ashes. So uh, we're we're really happy about that. But... You know, that's that's enough for that. Let's just move on to some nifty nerd news that I have for this week. All right, guys, thanks for um, sticking around for the nifty nerd news portion of the podcast. Uh, hopefully we can get through this pretty quickly and hopefully you guys have a lot of fun with it. Over on Instagram, I will be sharing pictures of the news articles now because I'm just that fancy. Touches anime style um, glasses thing. I don't know. Sh shut up. Leave me alone. So, uh, yeah, let's move on to the Nifty Nerd News for this week. Up first, we are going to talk about a little bit of Disney. And that is they want to start opening the parks up. Namely, they want to start opening up Disney Springs, which used to be known as Downtown Disney which is their like shopping off-site location. So while it is part of Disney World and their resort buses go to it, it's actually not like a regular park that you have to get tickets for to go. Um, I've been to Disney World a few times, and going to downtown Disney, now known as Disney Springs, was kind of fun. You know, they had regular restaurants. They had like a, um, 
what was that planet um our planet hollywood you know it was kind of like hard rock cafe but movies and some other cool restaurants they had like a arcade and stuff just a lot of cool shopping and fun things to do so disney they're starting to roll out and tell people like hey we're opening this up i guess eventually they want to open up the parks but what's really weird and really funny about this is they're pretty much trying like while they are taking covid19 precautions and making people wear masks and having the six foot rule and they've put up barriers in front of cashiers so you know they don't catch anything They've also put like a huge disclaimer of like, hey, if you come to the park, it is on you if you get COVID-19. It is not our fault. It's your fault, which I think is kind of funny. But at the same time, kind of like, I mean, I I, under, I get it. I understand. Like, I mean, obviously, they don't want to take the blame for it. But at the same time, if you don't want to take the blame for it, maybe don't open your parks. But, you know, it's this weird thing where like they want to make money. People want to go to Disney World, and but no one wants to catch COVID-19. And then when you catch COVID-19, you want to bitch about it. But guess what? The mouse house ain't going to help you out. So there you go. I don't know. I think it's kind of funny and kind of weird. Obviously, I'm not going to Disney World this year, let alone Disney Springs. So this isn't going to be on my... like. I don't think this is an issue for anyone like that doesn't live in or near Orlando, Florida, or Disney World, Florida, whatever you want to call it. I I think this is just a local issue, you know, like just it's just another thing opening up that people are going to go to and we'll see how that works out for them. But me, I'm going to stay I'm going to stay put and uh, stay safe moving on. So um, if you haven't been on Netflix and you haven't checked out what's been going on over there, they recently posted a trailer Featuring a lot of weird people staying at home doing the this weird creepy dance. But for people like me and others who have watched The Umbrella Academy, you might have recognized some of these weird people who are staying at home as actors from the show. And the weird fun dance that they're doing is not just like copying every COVID social distancing video that you've seen uh, on the internet. But it's also copying their own dance that they did season one of Umbrella Academy. Why are they doing this? It's not just to be cute. If you can see the little number two in the picture, they're announcing that season two of Umbrella Academy is coming to Netflix this year, this July, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not. July 31st, uh, season two of Umbrella Academy is coming out, which I'm pretty excited for. Uh, The way season one ends definitely means there has to be more because it is crazy. I don't want to give anything away, but it definitely ends where, holy crap, we need another season to work this shit out. And so we're getting it. And this was fun. If you haven't watched the video, you should definitely check it out. I wasn't going to post it on here in case copyright stuff with uh, Netflix and crap like that, but it's fun. It's cool. It's cute. And it's hip with the times. If uh, COVID-19 is hip, And with the times, uh, but I thought it was pretty neat uh, just to watch the video and get excited for season two of um, Umbrella Academy. Other stuff that I'm excited for season two is the Mandalorian TV show, which is on uh, Disney Plus. And if you've listened to the podcast these past few weeks, you know Disney Plus and the Mandalorian have announced some really cool casting. Of course, uh, Pedro Pascal is coming back playing the Mandalorian character. And then we had announcements that the guy who played uh, Jango Fett or the original Boba Fett, uh, he's coming back in a not not we're not too sure how big of a role he's coming back. But recently they have announced the casting of one, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Timothy Oliphant, who I don't know if you've I mean, He's got this, like, super recognizable face, and the only reason why I remember him is because he was my favorite part of the Santa Clara diet, um, playing the husband, and, like, his wife is turning into a zombie, and he's just kind of rolling with it, and they also get high a lot, which is a lot of fun. He's a really funny dude, a really cool character, and it's really neat that they're bringing him into The Mandalorian. Um, What is more interesting is the role that he's going to be playing in The Mandalorian, so, 
here, I'm going to post a picture. So if you know Boba Fett, you know, one, he's badass, has probably one of the coolest uh, Star Wars costumes to date. But he also, like, gets punked out like a little bitch in Episode 3. Or not episode episode six, or you know, Return of the Jedi from the original three. That one, he gets knocked into a sarlacc pit and presumably dies. But everyone's like, "Oh no, no, he doesn't." I don't know. I don't read the books. So I don't really know what happens. But there's all kinds of myths and theories of what could happen. But in the books, there's a character named uh, Cobe Vanth. Cobe Vanth is or was a slave who freed himself. And he was on Tatooine. He then finds discarded Mandalorian armor, which looks oddly similar to Boba Fett's uh, Mandalorian armor, which, you know, you put two and two together. It, it's the same. You know, it's the same. So donning Boba Fett's armor, he decides to take over a town on Tatooine. Well, not take over. Liberate. There we go. That's the the fun propaganda term for that. Liberate a town. Uh, where it's basically not scum and villainy like the rest of Tatooine. He runs he runs a tight ship, a clean, good guy ship. Uh, that's who Timothy Oliphant's going to play. Is this guy Cobb Vant? Uh, what does this mean? Is this kind of like, I mean, are we seeing the story now for season two? Uh, where this guy steps in, we all think it's Boba Fett. Turns out it's not the real Boba Fett. And the real Boba Fett comes to like take his armor. Is he going to be a bad guy? Is he going to be a good guy? I mean, he's a Mandalorian so will he be hired to hunt, like as a bounty hunter, hunt the the current Mandalorian and Baby Yoda, or what? What's going to happen? I don't know. Mandalorian's been an awesome, awesome series, though. I love the first season. Love how it ended, and it it had a good, solid conclusion, but left some stuff open. So now, like, we can power into the next. A uh, bit of the Mandalorian, so I, I'm pretty stoked for that, and hopefully you guys are equally as stoked. Uh, what a lot of people aren't stoked for is the next season of Batwoman over on the CW or whatever uh, Warner Brothers uh, television crap shit is. I mean, don't get me wrong; they do a lot of great stuff over there on the CW with uh, the Flash, with Arrow, with Supergirl. There's a lot of great stuff. Um, I'm concerned about Batwoman, though, mainly because Ruby Rose, who plays the main character, uh, I forget her name, but Batwoman, she's leaving. She's no longer going to be Batwoman. And it's kind of a shock to a lot of people. Well, maybe came as a shock to a lot of people who are not involved, like production wise, with uh, Batwoman. But uh, um, for those of us who just watched the show, yeah, this was kind of like, oh, shit, why is your main character to your TV show leaving all of a sudden? And as it turns out, some sources of saying that Ruby Rose maybe wasn't having a great time on the set of Batwoman or living in um, Vancouver where they shoot like all the CW stuff. And that led to a lot of tension on set. And like I said, these are just kind of anonymous reports saying that basically she was not a fun person to work with and she was not having a good time. And so they've decided just, you know what, it's a mutual split. I hate you. You hate me. Let's move on. And the CW just said, we're just going to go with it. <laughs> like, all right, let's uh, we're going to go find our new uh, Cassandra Kane. Is that Batwoman's like her name? I'm trying to remember. Because I know the actress's name is Ruby Rose, but the the uh, alter ego of Batwoman, or the alias, or you know, the secret identity. That's the word I was looking for. I think it's Cassandra Kane. And if you guys, we've had a few people join in to the live stream. If you guys know, please let me know. Because I'm horrible with this kind of crap. Like, I I read and I watch a lot of Marvel stuff. Not so much on the DC side of things. And I need to rectify that. I need to get... What is it, DC Unlimited? At least just try it out and uh, give some of this stuff a uh, a go around because I think I'll like a lot of what's going on over there on the CW and on the DC side of things. But we shall see. All right, moving on to the last bit of news, which I'm not too happy to talk about because you jerks, you assholes, you pieces of shit. You finally did it. 
You guys bitched and moaned and complained and harassed Warner Brothers enough to finally release the Snyder Cut. It's happening, guys. I thought this was fake. I thought this was just trolling. As it turns out, though, it's been confirmed. Warner Brothers is set to release the Snyder Cut in 2021 on HBO Max, which is going to be their, which is their streaming service. I think it's out now that you can get. Um, I can't believe it. I really thought they weren't going to do it. I thought this was not happening. I thought we had avoided this massacre. Um, as it turns out, no. Nah. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, I guess like, hey, yeah, you're getting... Oops, I dropped something. I mean, I guess it means like, hey, yeah, we're getting something like similar but different at the same time. But, oh, thank you, Eric. Kate King. I don't know why I was thinking Cassandra. I think it's maybe... Uh, whatever. Fuck me, right? Uh, um, But yeah, so... Like, getting the Snyder Cut, I guess that's kind of cool, right? Because a lot of people knew that there was a preliminary cut of the movie that Zack Snyder, you know, had envisioned. And sadly, he had to leave due to family issues. And then Josh Whedon stepped in, who had done Avengers, and basically MCU fight it, you know, Marvel fight it, Avenger fight it, whatever you want to call it. And... Ultimately, it left a really awkward movie, the Justice League movie, or, what, or Batman v Super, or no, it was Justice League, it wasn't Batman v Super, so it just kind of didn't feel right, and, um, oh, thank you, Eric, Cassandra's from the Birds of Prey stuff, but uh, Kate is the original one from, like, what they're doing at the CW, maybe Cassandra will come into the CW, I don't know, okay, we're getting off topic, Justice League, shit show, Snyder Cut, you bastards. That's all right. Now we're back on track. <laughs> I mean, like I said, I, I guess this is cool because like we, like I just said, uh, Zack Snyder had a vision. And now he's getting that chance to go back and produce his vision. Uh, Warner Brothers reporting and spending anywhere between 20 to $30 million to get this done. And they might be bringing back actors to reshoot scenes or at least reduce uh, like dialogue. They're going to be doing also like more CGI stuff. So, I mean, that's a lot of work that's going in. Basically, they're just redoing the movie. That's like if Marvel looked at Avengers and was like, you know what? We should redo that. Like, let's like, let's make it mean more. Oh, wait, that's what they did in Endgame and Infinity War is they went back in time and pretty much just added to no. <laughs> but see, when Marvel did it, it made sense for the story. When DC did it, it's because damn it we're gonna make more money off these stupid idiots and because that's what's gonna happen no offense but and i'm probably gonna do it too i'm going to watch the snyder cut i'm probably gonna get hbo max just to watch it they haven't decided if they're gonna do like a four hour long movie or break it up into like a little series but i'm interested i'm curious a curious enough you know like i didn't want it to happen but now that it is happening you might as well just like you know turn into the skid of it all and maybe things won't be as bad maybe <laughs> anyway though that is it for the nifty nerd news section of the bri Fi podcast um i just you know there's a lot of cool stuff going on we got a lot of cool season two stuff uh happening with the mandalorian and with uh, umbrella academy curious to see what happens with batwoman without their batwoman and where how they move forward and what they do with that and then of course justice league the snyder cut just you know just gonna leave that there <laughs> i don't know if i'm i don't think i'm happy about it but i think i'm just gonna just to see you know it's just kind of like those things that you have to see just you know like we've all seen two girls one cup like you didn't really want well some of us wanted to but like you weren't really like yeah and telling your family about it but you you were interested you wanted to know because you didn't want to not know and that's kind of like the snyder cut of justice league is like two girls one cup to me like i just you kind of want to see it even though you know you shouldn't because it'll just leave you feeling weird but that's it for the nifty nerd news portion of the podcast guys want to thank you for sticking around for that uh but Please stick around because the next thing we're going to talk about, we're going to review a comic book um, going back to Thor, but we're going to Battleworld and we're going to Secret Wars because that's where our story takes us and that's where 
things kind of move forward a little bit. I say kind of move forward, but you'll see. We're going to take a short break for the recording and have some fun on the live feed. Hey, everybody. This is Nerd Bomber here, one of the co-hosts of the Online Warriors podcast. Our weekly podcast started as a way for three friends to keep in touch and discuss their passion for movies, gaming, technology, and entertainment. And since then, we've grown into a fantastic online community. Every Wednesday, we release a new episode discussing the latest nerdy news, and then we go hands-on with our weekly adventures and a fun trivia show. Sound interesting? Check us out on every podcast platform, including Spotify and Apple Podcasts, or hit us up at onlinewarriorspodcast.com. All right, guys. Thanks for um, hanging out and listening to the comic book review portion of the BriFi podcast. Uh, this time we're looking at Thor's Battle World tie-in or Secret Wars tie-in, and um, it's definitely a comic series. <laughs> I, I definitely will say that. Um, for those who are new to what we've been doing here on the podcast, we've been starting Jason Aaron's run of Thor way back from 2012 for a multitude of reasons. One reason is he introduces Jane Foster as Thor which we're going to get to see with uh, Thor Love and Thunder in theaters when it comes out, when they start filming all that. And also uh, the recent um, tie-in series, big series, forgot what they're called already because we haven't had comics in like two months, um, event series, uh, War of the Realms, where all the realms went and fought each other, kind of like Secret Wars in a weird way. <laughs> um and so that was a cool story that I had checked out and that I actually reviewed for you guys. But after reading that, I wanted to know, how did we get here? You know, one, I wanted to know how Jane Foster became Thor. And also, I want to know, how did we get to War of the Realms? And it starts pretty quickly in Jason Aaron's run back in 2012 for something that happened in 2019. Like seven years in the making, uh, he was planting seeds for the story. And this is one of them. Uh, while it doesn't seem like Battle World or Thor's, um, Thor's is a tie-in series. Uh, and Battle World is like the weird subset of tie-ins. Um, it, it's kind of confusing. I already know. Secret Wars was kind of confusing for people who weren't reading up to that. Like, I think you had to be reading Fantastic Four, the Avengers, the, like, uh, Secret Avengers. I can't remember. There's like... Three books that were all interwoven together that were just um, pushing the story of Secret Wars. And not on, and on not only on top of all this, like these three stories tying in Secret Wars and building up to that moment, you had to shut off every book that Marvel was doing because now they were all getting thrown into Secret Wars. They were getting thrown into Battle World and had to deal with this. And Secret Wars was when all the worlds and all the different Earths, 616, 1610, 69XX, Big Boobs, Slayer, XX, whatever, you know, like if it was a, a number, it was an Earth. They were all thrown together, all different versions of Spider Man, Thor's, Captain America's, uh, just you name it. They had an alternate version of it all thrown together and they just had to deal with it until they just couldn't deal with it anymore and um, they end up setting the world right and everything goes back to normal so that's kind of what happens in secret wars but let's focus on thor's which uh jason aaron continues and actually despite all this happening is able to intertwine his story into this so that it pushes thor and jane's story even further which i appreciate um so in Battle World, the Thors are basically like superpowered cops. That's that's what they are. They have teams, and this book is pretty much almost a buddy cop movie, except his buddy gets killed in the first issue. So damn. <laughs> so now it becomes like this murder mystery, murder mystery uh, style comic where um, Ultimate Thor is trying to figure out who killed Beta Ray Bill, Thor, and. Um, he just going around trying to get answers. You get to meet different Thors with a lot of different personalities. Some nice, some not so nice. Some that you need to worry about. And uh, that's going to come into play later in the story. Uh, of course, he runs into the the main Thor, 616 Thor, who is unworthy Thor. That's what they call him because he used to be a cop. 
but now he's not because he's become unworthy. So that's why he carries an axe and not Molnir the hammer. And they all have their own different hammers that are all Molnir, but it just all look differently. It's kind of cool. It's kind of neat to see all these different Thors and just how, you know, they all their their weapons look and stuff. There's even a Storm Thor which makes freaking sense cuz she controls lightning, Thor controls lightning. She's like double Thor. It's pretty badass. Um but what's also kind of weird, so if you don't know Secret Wars too much, uh, basically Doctor Doom and some other Illuminati members rewrite the past to create Battle World. So while 616 Thor is in here and looking sexy without a shirt and a bat axe, he kind of is confused with this past versus his actual past. And that's kind of what drives this whole story is that... One, someone's killing people, but they're not like they're killing multiple people, but the people are all the same person. Because, like I said, this is Battle World where there's different versions of everyone, and someone's killing all the different versions of Jane Foster. And that doesn't sit right with uh, some of the Thors because they why they don't recognize why this doesn't sit right. They feel something, they feel something's not right. That's what causes unworthy 616 Thor or our universe Thor to become unworthy in this timeline because he's tracking down the killer and why this is all happening. And, um, things just start getting more and more entwined where enemies become friends, friends become super enemies and Dick Thor's are super dickish. Loki is a homeless dude, which is kind of strange. And, um, (laughs) uh, thanks. Uh, Randy, it's called the one, um, it's just pretty interesting. It gets pretty uh, epic with everyone going around fighting each other. Uh, they finally realize who's killing all the Jane Fosters when Jane Foster Thor shows up. Um, to kind of like all at the huge climax of it all. And then it moves on back into like, oh yeah, I forgot. We're not our own story. We're actually a tie in to uh, Secret Wars. And now we got to go finish that event story so we can get back to, you know, our shit. And so like... in. I hate that about these kind of stuff, like event tie-ins and stuff like that, whether it be Secret Wars, whether it be Original Sin, um, Civil War, all this stuff. These comics and their stories have to halt so that they can be a part of this event so it makes sense or whatnot. And then they have to, you know, get thrown back in their own stories. And it's kind of like this weird speed bump that you do. I don't like it, but... I understand it's a part of comics. You know, it it happens. This is what we live with. But here's where Jason Aaron ties shit in, you know. Um, Ultimate Thor and the big fight where all the Thors come sweeping in to um, take over, like defeat Doom or Doom Guard, whatever it's called, and all his Illuminati minions and shit or whatever you want to call them. Uh, Ultimate Thor ends up losing his hammer. I can't remember if he dies or... Or what, what not, but uh, his hammer, which I believe is called Stormbreaker, uh, crashes onto 616 Earth. And so now we have another Thor hammer on Earth, where James Foster still has Molnir, and Thor, the unworthy Odin son. Well, who knows? You know, like, but that's the beauty of Jason Aaron. That's how he takes this and actually ties it into something meaningful or something like. That pushes this story forward, which I appreciate, you know, um, because I believe Thor, our Odin son, you know, gets a hammer uh, for War of the Realms. I, I'm kind of fuzzy on how War of the Realms all played out, like the details of how Thor got a hammer and started to fight. But I'm excited, you know, um, we we get to this point finally. Well, we got to see Jane Foster become Thor. We got to see her do her thing. Then we got to watch this little side story of just like fun Thor cops and old people are dying and haha, Loki's a homeless hobo and still insanely powerful magic user. And then that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, and there's a lot of like police brutality throughout this because they just go harass hulks because why not? And also like zombies and uh Ultrons and just just you know, they just harass things because they can they're thors and they're cops and you know that hits a little too close for home and i don't want to talk about it anymore (laughs) but uh as far as the rating goes for this book this side story um 
if you guys are new, we give three, we give one of three ratings. We have a negative charge, which means I did not like it. Don't read it. We have a neutral charge, which means it's not bad. It's not good. You know, read it, read at your, uh, own risk. And then we have a positive charge, which means yes, come read this. I'm, I'm into it. I want you to check it out. Thor's is a neutral charge. It's not terrible read. I actually really enjoy the artwork on it. It's, uh, it's a really f- uh, fun looking book and there's a lot of cool looking uh, action sequences. As far as story wise, other than the fact that it shows how a new hammer gets put on Earth 616, eh, there's not really much to it, guys. Um, that's why it gets a neutral charge for me. Solid story, good artwork. Um, not necessary to read. All you need to know is Secret Wars happen where a bunch of Thors got involved. One of those extra Thors loses their hammer and it gets brought onto the main Marvel Universe's Earth where, you know, an Odin son who may not have a hammer could possibly pick up another one if he be worthy. So that's kind of where it puts us. It sets things up going forward for the story. And I'm also I'm all right with that. But as far as the regular podcast goes, guys, that is it. Um, we've came, we saw, we talked Nifty Nerd News, and we reviewed a comic book. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And if you missed the live stream, hopefully you guys are checking it out on the recording on iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, iHeartRadio, Spotify, where Google Play, wherever else you get your podcast, I'm probably there. And it's kind of nice. You know, I, I enjoy it. I think I'm even posting on YouTube or hosting on YouTube again. I can't remember. Um, maybe I'm not because I think if I find it weird forcing people to go on a video streaming service or, like you know, like YouTube and listen to something, you know, or if you don't have premium or you don't have music or whatever, you can't like turn your phone off or like you know close your screen and it's weird it's stupid i hate youtube but i love youtube maybe i'll post the live stream video over to youtube that's what i should do and then you know people who missed the original live stream can go check it out i don't know i'm i'm, I'm reaching here guys I'm, I'm grasping for things i just miss comic palooza is what i'm saying but that's it for the regular podcast guys if you're on the live stream stick around because we'll chit chat if you have any questions or anything like that But uh, that's it for the BriFi podcast this week. BriFi out.